Okay, there we go. Hello everyone, how's it going? Team here. And this is um, another one of the BXJS coding live streams. And uh, we're continuing our work on BXJS weekly website and related tooling. And today we're gonna finish, or at least I hope so, we're gonna finish the weekly um, CI orderlies um, pipeline, right? So last time, just to refresher, we built that tool that checks for duplicates and also generates the full index. Today we're gonna configure a CI, I'm guessing with Travis CI, that would uh, first of all execute the check for duplicates on um, pull requests. So I'm gonna basically create new episodes in uh, developer branch and then merge it into master with a via pull request. And if the CI passes, then I know that there's no duplicate, so I don't have to think about it, you know, myself. And uh, we're also gonna set up the index generation on releases. So each time the new commit is merged into master, we want to, uh, first of all, generate the new index JSON. And second of all, um, publish this index JSON on GitHub releases section, right? So the in GitHub, when you uh, tag something, essentially you create a new release, right? So we're gonna set all of this up and it all has to be automatic because all I wanna do is I wanna come here, I wanna go into the developer branch, I want to go into links, I want to create the new uh, document from here. And uh, yeah, and then basically just send a pull request. And if everything is correct, it should just merge it, right? So this is my sort of um, line of thought um, as much automation as possible as little actions from me as possible. And this is exactly what we're going to do. So we are, I think we're going to go for the Travis CI because uh, it's, it's a nice platform and I've been using it for a lot of my open source projects. And um, we're, I, I guess we're just going to roll with it, right? So we got the Travis CI, I don't remember, is it Travis CI org or Travis CI com? Because they still have both domains, right? And um, I don't remember which one is going to be later on, but... Uh, I think, is it, wait, um, I'm confused about this because I remember reading this com versus uh, Travis CI org. Yeah, that's the thing. So they were announced that they're gonna move or whatever to some of them. They originally separate platform, Travis CI com was paid and okay. As of May, 2018, new users and projects should only use Travis CI com. Okay, so we're gonna use com. I, I still have a lot of my projects on travisci.org actually, but Whatever, so we're gonna roll with that, right? Um, we need what? First of all, Travis uh, CI. Uh, <laughs> right, hey Donna, apologies. I keep forgetting that uh, some of you guys were complaining that I was, when I get too excited, I tend to start speaking a lot faster. So I'm gonna try to calm down a bit and speak a bit calmer as I typically do. Right, uh, let me think for a second. So we need Travis CI for Node.js, right? So they have a really good documentation. And this is what we are gonna start with. So first of all, I think we need the Travis YAML uh, file, right? We're gonna go with that. And uh, just for starters, we are gonna define, I don't think we care that much about the um, languages itself, so as in the node version itself, right? So I'm just gonna go with the default one, which by default I think is the LTS version. So it's gonna be node 10, which is absolutely fine for us. And uh, in our case, I think, yeah. So basically by default it runs the npm test command, which means that I can just save this. We can go to package JSON and add the test, which will in our case be node tools, um, what is it called? Check dupes, right? check dupes.js. So theoretically, that actually should be enough to run automated testing. So let's add everything. Um, add basic tra <coughs> Travis CI config and uh, npm test command. Right, so we're gonna add this, we are gonna push that and uh, once we configure the Travis CI integration, we should basically see our tests passing, right? So how do I add the new repository over here like this, right? And we want um, sync account, where is my BXJS? This is not review and other, yeah, there you go. So we need to add authorize it to access BXJS. There's my password. Come on. 
you yeah okay it authorized it nice so in theory now we should be able i guess we have to force resync once we are able to access uh, bxjs account come on xjs no there we go okay now it's synced so we want bxjs uh, activated okay right we have to activate the integration or all repos sure why not that is fine we are activating travis for it uh, right now we should get access to all the repositories i mean i guess you know in this case we could have probably granted it just to a couple but whatever let's just do blanket cover right we got this one and um is there a way to did i first of all did i push yes i did so trigger build is what we want master uh trigger custom build uh custom commit message custom build only exists on travis yeah it'll not appear in your yeah okay fine we'll just trigger it like this just to see if it actually works right so um setting up ci might be a bit um, annoying because it does take quite some time for you you know to wait for the jobs to start make sure nothing fails and if there's any failures you have to basically debug it and fix it and edit configs so this is essentially what this stream is going to be about mm, but uh, yeah so it did pick up the config correctly now we just wait for the available worker and um, then we should see the result so what we want to do is we want to run it on pull requests and we want to set up the auto releases uh, from master branch wherever we push to a master branch uh, we should automatically create a release and we should automatically tag it uh, build the index and upload it to github releases right so this is sort of the general idea okay um unexpected token okay i guess version oh why is it uses node version 0 10 by default what the hell i guess we do have to specify the node version um all righty then node.js i think it uses nvm to install it so uh, we can go what's the nvm wait a second nvm versions uh i think you can say like lts or something uh wait a second t -t 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 lts nvm install lts lts are gone uh so i guess no it's not that's not correct lts are gone uh lts remote long-term support schedule for nvmrc lts are gone i guess we could just say lts are gone right so that should work um get status get commit specify travis node version as lts are gone because for whatever reason travis still uses node i guess there's like backwards compatibility reasons right because there's there would be literally no other reason to use node 0 0.10 which is like i don't even know how old it is it's like probably a lot of years now now i'm curious node 10 was released when um yeah, this is not when was it released 0 10 34 lts february 2016 yeah that is very old okay where is my there we go there's a new build uh oh yeah yeah i mean youtube captions are yeah oh i mean i'm <laughs> I'm kind of you know I, I've seen the um, I think the most impressive captions uh, demo that I've seen was from the Microsoft and they had some incredible voice recognition technologies and I'm really hoping uh, Google will catch up with it and integrate it with um, uh, with the YouTube because current why is it no wait that is four nine so that's still all this hell what is the current version node LTS um, eight is also old. like latest one should be 10 right code names is what we want i guess argon was yeah ah, yeah okay this is old um uh, dubinium so we want dubinium actually okay right let us change it dubinium because it will fail again right because um there is no destruction in node 4 right 
Uh, yeah, Twitch and for I mean real time captioning. As I said, I, I've seen one demo of it, and it was was on Microsoft conference where they presented like machine learning AI achievements. They had real time on stage captions that were real time translated to a different language that looked amazing. That was literally like one time demo, and I never seen that anymore. <laughs> okay, um, right. Let us try this. So uh, LTS. Dubinium. All right. Uh, I hope I spelled that correctly. We're going to find out in a second. Um, okay. We got that. Now we wait for the new build. Yep, that's how CI setup works. You just sit and wait for the new build to start. Hey, Bakao, welcome to the stream. We basically just started and trying to set up the very basic uh, Travis integration that just keeps Installing the wrong Node.js because apparently I don't know all its code names. Yes. Uh, no, you did not miss too much. Um, as I said, you know, we just created the Travis YAML and specified the npm test command. And that's basically it. Now I'm trying to figure out which version of the node to install so that my code works fine, basically. <laughs> ah, what version of node do I actually have locally? Um, I think it's, yeah, 1013. Okay, I probably should update as well. All right. Um, I mean, so far we're just sitting here and watching the CI running to make sure that it actually passes, you know. Not exactly the most fun time ever, but um, kind of works. Okay. Uh, MPL install Dubinium. Dubinium not found. What browse available versions? Uh, did I misspell that? Do oh, Dubinium. God damn it. <laughs> Okay, of course, I, I had just had to misspell that. I should just copy this thing. Okay, right. Um, git commit specify do um fix typo, right? Yeah. Okay, I will know to copy paste that next time because apparently I cannot spell. Okay, 20 times commits later, uh, we should finally have the CI pipeline that actually executes and does not throw us on the basic setup. <laughs> if you are curious how the CI setup looks in real life, this is more or less the same. You just sit there and be like, oh, I misspelled that again. I have to fix that. It's like fix typo, new commit, fix typo, new commit. Oh boy, okay, come on. Um, yeah, I mean, Travis is really nice because you basically get the runners for free, right? If you're, if you're doing open source. Like if you want any private stuff, you had to set up the internal runners and this could be quite annoying. Like GitLab CI is quite straightforward and the runners are pretty easy to set up with Docker, but there are still like a lot of edge cases where you just don't really want to manage all of that yourself. So uh, yeah, having a managed CI system that is essentially, you know, does everything for you is, is amazing, especially for free for open source projects. There we go. Now it's node version 10.14. This is what I want to see. And it's, yes, it passes. So we got it working on a master, which is amazing. Um, yeah, especially when you have to wait to the end of the process and find your mistake. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> see, I can take ages to set up because of this. We have a relatively small project here, right? So the whole CI process is actually quite fast. So it probably takes like, what, 21 seconds, right? On a larger projects, it might take some minutes. And I mean, if we take, um, I think I still have it on travisci.org. We have Exoframe, for example, Exoframe server is a very large project and it uses Docker, it starts containers and does, you know, pretty complex things. And it might take, where is it actually? Uh, this is the key that, I mean, three minutes. Okay, not that bad. Uh, could you do all that in PR and squash it afterwards? Um, you could do that, but I, I mean, I don't know, you know, I don't th specifically think that clean commit history is such a must have things like, yeah, I guess like in this case, you know, we don't really have that much code. So I don't know if it brings any value in it's like, it, it's, it's okay. You know, for this case it's fine. I, I personally think that clean commit history is a bit overvalued. Let's put it this way. I guess when you, if you use the git uh, bisect to triage bugs, it might be helpful, but 
in this case, we have so little code that, you know, it doesn't even, it's not even a question here, I think. Okay, so we set up the CI. What we need to do now is, uh, first of all, that should run on the pull request, right? So we are gonna test this. I'm gonna create a branch develop. Um, we're gonna switch to it, and this is basically gonna be the branch which we will use from now on. Origin develop. There we go. Uh, right, I should type my thing. Come on. Oh, come on. Right, there we go. So we got the develop branch now, right? And what we are going to try now is we're going to try to break it. So I guess it's probably better to do in a test branch. Uh, so let's just create a new test branch, which we will delete afterwards. It's uh, what? No, not what? Git CO tests. Git. Uh, yeah. So we're going to do this. And I'm now going to create a new file that is going to be. Uh, okay. Uh, copy path. New file. Insert the path. Uh, kill all of that, 48, 39. And I'm just gonna copy this more or less the same what we did last time locally, right? So I'm just gonna do this. I am gonna say leave um, EG sounds, htm, we're gonna say github.com slash um, whatever. So it's just, it's basically different now, right? We got the releases, we can kill that actually, we don't want that. And uh, let's say add one or two or leave one or two links here. And then say WebSockets, a conceptual deep dive, um, not so conceptual deep dive, WebSockets, not conceptual. So this is, should be different, right? And then we're gonna leave the magic grid. So we have uh, one, two, three matches here. So basically that should throw an error, right? Um, git add git commit. So add erroneous. Uh, how do you spell that actually? Add file with dupes. You know what? <laughs> I don't. I don't even want to think. How do you spell erroneous now? Okay. And uh, git push minus u origin uh, test. Uh, what? No, wait. What I'm also thinking is that we actually want to test only on master or executed only on master and only on pull request. So we don't actually want to run it everywhere. Um, Travis CI, install dependencies, jobs. Uh, so we want CI environment, no encrypting developer program. Uh, this is not what we want. Programming languages, install in the, come on, uh, job life cycle. Build state, conditional builds. There we go, this is what we want. We want um travis wait a second travis ci only run on pull request right so this is what we want so we want to run only on pull requests and we only want to run on master branch essentially because we don't really care about everything else script if pull request um and i guess it runs on pull request by default maybe i'm overthinking this maybe it's okay if we just build it everywhere because why not, right? Uh, minus, yeah, minus u origin test. So I'm gonna push it to the test. Come on. So in theory, we should see the test failed. And then what I should do is, yes, create pull request. So we're not gonna merge it. And we're gonna merge it to master, that is correct. So what we have to do is we have to, uh, what I want to do is basically, yeah, that's the Travis checks. What I want to do is restrict merging unless the checks passes, right? Um, collaboration, what, what was it? There was a way to lock pull requests, branch protection rules. Um, hell if I remember, what was it? Require pull requests, no, reviews, status checks. There we go. Yes, please. Um, Branches up to date doesn't, I guess it does. Yeah, let's, let's just do this. Signed commits doesn't matter. Include administrators. Yes, please. I want, I don't trust myself. I want to be included in the rules as well. Restrict who can push to matching branches. And um, how do we, uh, people, uh, no, specify people allowed to push to matching branches. So I actually, oh yeah, this is applies to master, right? And uh, nobody should be able 
push to it essentially is, is what I want to do, right? So we want to lock the master branch completely and we only want to allow um, Travis, yeah, uh, status check. So we don't care for branch, but we care for pull requests is what we want to do. So we lock down the master branch completely. We don't allow direct pushes to it and pull requests can only be merged if the checks pass, right? So in this case, um, Travis CI pull request actually fails. And if we click on details, we should see that um, that's not what we want. We want the Travis CI thing itself, but now I have integrated thing, okay. Um, I mean, that's kind of neat, but I want to see the log. Is there a way to just see the log here? Build configuration, no. Uh, details, build failed. I guess this will take me to the build itself, right? Okay, cool. And we see uh, exact matches one, exact match two, and exact match three um, with additional possible match, right? So that seems fine, exactly what we wanted. Um, GitLab CI is pretty straightforward. I don't know what you, uh, how you get lost. I mean, the GitLab UI is not the most intuitive, but I found GitLab CI to be quite nice, to be honest. Okay, so we can actually close this pull request, right? And delete the test branch, um, close pull request. There we go. So this is now working. Um, I guess I can no longer push into master, which is also nice. So can I, I don't remember, can I delete the branches from GitHub now? Is that the thing? Our branches, uh, test, there we go. Delete, cool, nice, okay. Um, develop uh, and what was the branch minus D I think it was it test, right? There we go, okay, nice. Okay, so we got everything working. All right, so we got pull request set up, we got tests working. It now tells us if there are any duplicates. Uh, we got exact matches. We got, yeah, this seems to be okay. This is also, yeah, okay. So it seems to be working as expected. And essentially the test throws, so the CI fails, so we're good. So what we wanna do now is um, once we merge the pull requests, we wanna run the uh, Travis scripts only on master branch, right? And that script should um, generate the index and publish it to new GitHub uh, release, right? So this is what we want. Okay, let me just close all of that, I guess. Uh, I guess we could first of all specify the script um, index, let's call it, or I guess generate index, right? Node tools generate full index.js is what we want to run. Okay. Um, I did not set it up when I was looking for the artifacts to recover some files. Turns out my colleagues was deleting them. And I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the worst part when someone doesn't tell you how they set up the whole thing and you go and they're expecting it to be like, you know, standard and it turns out it works completely different. Yeah, I know, I know that feel. Okay, um, right, so we need to run Travis, we need to run specific thing only on master. So I think that Travis uh, has this releases thing, right? Um, deployments and uploads, and we want the GitHub uh, releases, there we go. So we want the deploy thing and um, provide releases, GitHub oath token and file to upload. So we also want, after, um, I think it was, wait, wait, Travis. Like it's it's a bit, um, the thing with Travis is that his documentation is quite good, but it's really hard to navigate it from their website. So I always end up Googling it. Travis CI after success. I think it is after success, right? Customizing the builds. Um, so let me tell after, so, what? No, really? You just, that was, that was just found there. What? Um, I know it exists, don't lie to me. After success, there we go. <coughs> Apologies. Okay, so we want after, uh, whoops, no, I want after success. Uh, and we want to run npm run, uh, how did I call it, generate index, right? So this is going to generate our index JSON, right? And in this case, we're going to say index JSON. 
keep clean up. We don't want to clean up the file. So we, I still need to add this thing here. And we want to say that we want to do that on master. Uh, so we don't need this. Keep, yeah, there you go. So this is what we want to do, right before deploy. So there's a before deploy. Remember, they had this. So basically, um, because I'm not going to be writing, um, God, come on, because I'm not going to be the one creating the tags, right? I want the Travis to do it for me. So I wanted to run the tests. If the test passes, it's going to generate the index. It's going to tag the release and then release the thing on it. And I actually want to only do this on. Um, so we need this on thing, but we only want to do it on master branch essentially, right? So uh, yeah, let's uh, your git username, um, Tim, I think it's Tim Armilov, but whatever. It's yamalite at uh, gmail.com. Travis tag. Uh, yeah, the tag is fine. I think we can just leave it by default. So it's going to be basically date and uh, git log hash. And we tag it with this. So we need um, two things. First of all, we need the on master and then we need to add the GitHub O token, um, which we, how do we do that? So first of all, on, they have an example which says on master or something. Conditional releases, there we go. Okay, on branch release. So this is what we want. We want on branch master, right? And now we just need to add this GitHub API token, um, which is, uh, how do I do that? I guess, I, I remember they had some sort of a command line tool. After success should only run on master as well. That is absolutely true. Um, Travis CI after success branch. There you go. That's, that's what I wanna find. Um, uh, after success, deploy. Uh, okay, yeah, so we can just uh, do this, right? Gotta be deploy. No, that's not not what I want. Deploy branch. Um, ah, is there no better way of doing that? Conditional branch after success. Now, like for for real, build building specific branches. Yes, building specific branches. Branches except branches only. Yeah, but that, that's like the complete build, right? Build all branches using regular expression, skipping a build. Skip Travis, okay, that's not what we want. I mean, we could basically say that we only wanna, does, does saying that it should be branches only master Will it build, because I mean, we don't really care about the builds on the branches, right? All we care about is the pull requests and the releases and builds on branches. You could just do it in before, oh, that's that's a, actually a good point. <laughs> that is a very good point. Yes, uh, thank you, that's a good suggestion. <laughs> I'm overthinking it as usual. So generate new index file, set up git and username commits, uh, generate new tag, um, create new release tag, right, is what we want, and then deploy. Okay, so we now just need this GitHub OAuth token thing. Um, and that's basically it. Okay, cool, so we figured that out. Uh, did I, I did, okay, cool. So we are got this, this is done, this is done. Right, so we need to generate this um, token. I think I need the Travis command line for that. Hell, if I remember how to install it. Travis CI command line client. Right, uh, Ruby, do I have Ruby installed actually? Ruby minus V, I don't have. Okay, sudo apt get install. No, wait, I guess I should probably update at some point. I have not done this in a lot of time. Okay, come on. So we need to install Ruby and uh, it's just a game. Okay, cool. Uh, no, it's sudo apt. Get, I guess apt cache. Oh, I get, I mean I think you can just use app now, right? Apt search Ruby. So yeah, okay, that is a lot of packages. We just want Ruby. Is it is there like basic Ruby package? Uh yeah, okay. You know what? I'm just gonna rely on it being there and say sudo apt install Ruby. 
and hope that it will install something that makes sense. Uh, why does it install uh, what jQuery? I mean, Rake makes sense. Ruby Gems integration makes sense. Why does it install JavaScript Common? Uh, what? Okay, <laughs> you know what? Ruby install uh, Ubuntu. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna search for it. Uh, Ruby is what what if what is crit? I think the first time hearing this word. Um, like twenty more minutes, I guess. Okay, installing Ruby. How are we gonna set up the database? I mean, we don't need database, right? So this is why I'm gonna be publishing the. Um, this is why I'm gonna be publishing the index file. We're just gonna download it and use it in our server. So this is our database essentially. Uh, Ruby minus V install in Ubuntu. Uh, Ruby full. Okay, let's try Ruby full. And what you want? Uh, that still drags in. <sighs> okay, you know what? Whatever. Just do your thing. I don't even care if there's JavaScript in. <laughs> like this is so weird. Like let me install Ruby as well, font Slato, JavaScript common, uh, and a bunch of other things that I don't know if make any sense in relation to Ruby, but fine. Do I need to install GEMS somehow? Uh, Ruby build, Ruby installer, managers, Truby, Wuru. I hope it installs the gem command as well. Okay. <laughs> um, just to address the whole, like how you're gonna handle the database thing. I mean, the idea is basically that the release is gonna generate the releases file, right? And then in the releases, we're gonna have, um, we're gonna have the index.json file that is essentially our database, right? Which will, the website will download it and use it to search over the articles. This is the point. So the, the whole database is gonna be just in a file. All right, uh, Ruby, JavaScript, Python. I mean, Ruby is great. I, I actually wrote my um, diploma in it. So I had like a remote learning system or something among those lines and was written in Ruby and Ruby is a very nice language. Like it's, uh, it has a lot of very cool little features integrated in, in language that I wish would make it to the JavaScript. But um, yeah, are you even moving anywhere? 43%, come on. Oh, um, right, I forgot to disable the virus protection. Right, I keep forgetting that it makes, um, it makes it super slow if you have it enabled. Not very safe, but at least very fast. <laughs> All right, come on. What's up? Ah, meanwhile, we can, uh, so we need release a setup there. I mean, I don't really need, so first of all, we need to actually generate the, um, oh, we need to generate the, Oh, token, right? Um, oh, hey, um, Donna, thank you for the cheer. This is awesome. Right, so we need to generate the... Oh, blech, God, I'm forgetting the name of this thing. What is the name of it? Oath key. Yes, right, there you go. This is what I'm talking. Uh, Oath token, how do, is there a way to just... I remember it was per repository, right? Deployment keys, there we go. Uh, add deployment, no, this is, is it what I want or not? I, I, last time I did it was like half a year ago and I already don't remember how that works. <laughs> um, da, 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 override existing, Travis releases, uh, authenticating with the OAuth token. Uh, we, uh, GitHub OAuth token is what we want. Create a personal token. Um, I don't care about the command line, but can I just, uh, settings, personal access token, generate new token, okay. So we go into settings. Um, what was it again? <laughs> I am terrible in this. Developer settings, okay. Or maybe it's just too obscure. Um, Oath apps, personal access tokens, there we go. Okay, so I got a bunch of them. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna take this off screen and uh, generate a token uh, over here. So this is, uh, which scope do we need again? We need a public repo or repo scope. Okay, so I guess repo should be fine. And 
let's call it VXJS weekly CI token. I don't think I need any other things and I'm gonna generate the token. So I got the token over here now. Um, I won't see it again. So I won't show it to you guys because I want my GitHub account safe. All right, we got the Ruby installed. So just to make sure Ruby minus V that that is fine, right? Uh, 2.0, well, we have 2.5, which is better, I think. Gem install Travis, uh, is it just Travis? Yes, um, yes, we can just run this thing, right? Okay. Uh, error fetching multipart, oh, I guess it has to be sudo, right? Because it's globally installed, which is blah, but whatever. I mean, it's nice having everything in a VM because you just don't care that much about the whole, you know, sudo not sudo. If you if it gets clogged, you just kill it and reinstall it. This is like the beauty of using VSL because it literally takes seconds to uh, reinstall Ubuntu and get a new clean machine. <laughs> I really prefer programming over science and technology game name. It's too broad. Um, what, what do you mean by that? I'm not sure I understand. Can, can you elaborate a bit? Because I'm not sure I, I get what you mean. Okay, uh, so we got this. We should be Travis version, right? Uh, shell completion. Yeah, sure, install it. Why not? Okay, so cool. We got what we want. And now we can actually, so we generated the token and we can do Travis setup releases, right? Run it here. And detect it. Yes, this is a correct repository. Was there not known to Travis yet? Why is it org? Are you kidding me right now? Is it... Oh, okay. You have to pass the com thing. There we go. Okay. That makes sense. The tag or classification of when you start the stream is used to... Oh, yeah. The, the, like the tags are um, Travis login pro. I mean, I'm not pro, but okay. Let's log in. Uh, username. Um, can I... Okay. Auto? Can you log in with auto? I guess not. Um, what's my password actually? I don't have a password for Travis. So I guess we need pro GitHub token. That's been a while since I used any of that. Um, invalid argument GitHub token. You don't want to enter password anyway. Um, Um, right. Oh, I, I guess it wants my GitHub account. Is that it? Uh, GitHub account. Yeah, okay, sure. Here's my username. Um, right, so what is my GitHub password? Hell if I remember that. Uh, copy password. Paste it over here. Two factor authentication of. Oh, ah, come on. Right, let me, let me do that. So we're going to do that in a second. I mean, the, the new Twitch system with tags and, and everything is a bit wonky. Like um, before they allowed you to enter basically everything. It was like teams, which made no sense. Now they have those tags, which make more sense, but the tags are so limited. You cannot really enter anything reasonable in there, which is like, <laughs> which why? Okay, um, here is my code, uh, 603. Okay, there we go. So we are logged in, right? And now we can run Travis setup releases com. Uh, Travis already exists. Run for, um, okay, first of all, what did I change there? So we actually did all of this stuff. Um, right, so let me just have a look at the diff again. I guess I'll just commit that, right? Uh, setup Travis, oh, Travis, yes, that's a new service, Travis. Setup Travis deployment. And, whoops. Um, da, 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 right, okay, and now we are gonna run. Tra so, since it's already all committed, so I don't care if it gets overwritten. Trevin, yes, this, I'm just gonna come up with 25 names for the Travis. I'm gonna do force and uh, username Yamalite passwords. Why do you want my password again? I'm, I'm fine, whatever. I, I'll give you, I guess, does it generate the token for me now? Whoops. That <laughs> That's the wrong button. Um, okay. Yeah, to, oh, come on. <laughs> Why you gotta be, I already know, I already generated the token for you. Why do you have to be like this? But okay. Um, fine, fine. 8833387. There we go. 
file to upload index json deploy only from yes deploy no encrypt yes of course okay so i guess it generates the key for me uh question mark let me just uh, refresh the page and see oh yeah okay so it cool so travis actually generates everything for you you don't even have to think about that we just need to edit uh on repo and uh, branch master i think it was right git diff um oh god it screwed up all my formatting come on okay let me reformat this real quick because i like my white space right there we go uh git status git diff so now we should uh there's still a lot of changes but okay right um so we got the ap key we got the generate the new index oh it removed all my comments god damn it come on we skip the um okay skip first of all we need to skip clean up because otherwise this file will be removed right so we we want that all right uh on branch master right repo yes uh, that is correct we got the ip key which is encrypted we got provider releases we got the generate index we got the name and uh, this is all fine i think that looks okay right so theoretically um right so i guess i can close this we i can kill my old never used token uh, let me just pop up the chat over here. Okay, um, I saw a video where someone scanned all the Travis file on GitHub and parsed them and found people were putting their OOTH key. Um, you like, yeah, I, it's like if there's a way for people to do it in an unsecure way, there will always be some people that will do it this way and be like, you know, it works. Why would I care? Uh, like there, there was a video of a guy scanning GitHub for Bitcoin wallets and just finding some, you know, with like some bitcoins in them and just ability to transfer them basically same goes for like people scanning github for amazon web services keys that was like public and just you know you can just i i mean it's actually so bad that amazon set up their own scanner and if the scanner detects your public key or the private key actually in the github amazon will lock this key and disallow it for the future use because there were so many people affected by this crap that Amazon was like, you know, screw that. We're not going to deal with the refunds. We're just set up the system that would automate that. <laughs> okay, uh, git commits set up auto releases to um, GitHub. Um, okay, yeah, that's auto GitHub releases. There we go. Can you differentiate between a secured token like you are using and unsecured one? I mean, secured tokens look like the. Um, a64 encrypted stuff right and they are really long unsecured ones are typically uh, um like what well, i think it's like 20 or 30 symbols or something so and plus you know this you can literally see the secure prefix here so that tells you that it's um it's encrypted because travis has to decrypt it right they use the encryption keys based on your username and the repo and some additional stuff all right so we pushed it into develop um and i think first of all we need to go to travisci.com so we put the docs over here so in theory uh yeah so we got the branches uh developed this should this should only run tests right now right so we make sure that it runs tests and we send the pull request to master and check if the pull request again only runs tests and then we merge this pull request and once we merge it we should see a new release that will contain um the index.json file, right? Okay, uh, and if that works, then we're basically done for today. So meanwhile, while we are waiting for the Travis to do its work, feel free to send your questions or you know whatever you wanna ask me, ask me anything basically in the chat. We'll be more than happy to talk about that. And um, once we're done with that, I'm gonna go and have some lunch because I'm hungry. And um, after that, we maybe I will stream some Darksiders 3 because I finally get my hands on it and I'm quite excited. All right, uh, yeah, that seems to be working perfectly. No duplicates uh, and it only runs testing, which is great. We're gonna do a pull request. Here's the question. So theoretically, if I go, no, I mean, I'm not, not even gonna test it, right? Um, setup auto releases, right? Uh, do. 
Yes, this is exactly what we want to see, create pull request. So theoretically, we should now see a uh, new build on, on, come on, I know it should be there. Or is it like create, oh, pull request, I'm looking at the wrong place. I was like, where is my pull request build? There we go. All right. Um, so once this is finishes again, it should be on the tests and I hit that merge button. We should see the release after some time automatically tagged by Travis and with the index JSON, I hope. Unless I screwed something up, then we'll have to debug that and fix it. But uh, I think that looks safe. It generates index JSON, right? We save it to index path and index path is index JSON. Exactly. Okay, cool. So I, I think we got this, but you never know until it finishes building. And there was so many times, especially on the large Java builds, uh, like, I, I mean, I, I guess I can just show you um, this CI dot org. We still have like a lot of stuff on the org. And one of the things that we've been working for the past years was this uh, pretty large project that deals with um, big data benchmarking. And um, it builds, like it's built takes 10 minutes to finish. It's a very big Java app and oh boy, testing this thing is not fun. <laughs> okay, uh, pull request finishes. It also does only testing, which is great. So uh, now we can merge it. Let us do the merge. And now in theory, we should see the new build running for the master branch, right? And this build after the tests are done should generate new release, generate index JSON and push it into the GitHub releases. So let us see what happens. Uh, so for now we have the zero releases, which makes absolute sense. Uh, which means that basically after that we are done with BXGS weekly repository and uh, we can switch to on the next live stream, we can actually switch to building the website itself which is great because that took way longer than I expected it to take. <laughs> but um, yeah, apparently I suck at estimations. At least, you know, when it doesn't concern my work because I was like, yeah, that sounds fun. We'll do it in a couple of live streams. No, 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 no. Okay, test run. So we generate the index, right? So this should, um, yes, uh, that is success. Uh, right, right. Hey, it seems to be working. Now for refresh, we should see a new thing with index JSON. Ta-da, perfect. We got, we got it working. So done, we're done. We're basically done. How is the final files gonna be? I mean, this is, this is, this is basically what you see, right? So there's the index JSON. There's, so you got the, okay, the release, you got the auto packaged, the auto packaged source code from GitHub. And this is the index JSON that we upload. So this is exactly what we generate with the generate full index and exactly what we can read with the read index uh, code here, right? Um, and this is what we wanna use in the front end for the searches. So um, yeah. Okay, uh, we are actually officially done here. I, I don't think, I mean, I should be able to create a file here, right? Uh, here's, a, here's a question. It create oh okay yeah so it would literally you can yeah there you go this is what I want to see perfect cool uh, Donna thank you very much once again for your cheers this is this is just so um, so awesome to, it's like you literally that one person who cheers me up in the chat <laughs> okay guys um, this is it for today's stream uh, as I said I'm gonna do a break and go eat something because I'm hungry as hell. But um, yeah, we are gonna stream some video games later on. As I said, Darksiders 3, so if you're interested in video games, we're gonna do that in um, an hour or so, I guess. And then we're gonna continue building the website on Friday. Um, or I guess we're gonna start with the website actually because we, we got that working. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching as usual. Um, again, Donna, thank you so much for your support. This is great, <laughs> this is like super awesome. Um, as usual, feel free to join our Discord chat and talk to us over there. We're more than happy to do that. Uh, the VOD is going to be on YouTube. Um, all the information is in the description to the channel or to the video if you're watching this on YouTube. 
Thank you for watching. Donna, stop it. I already feel uncomfortable. Just stop it, please. <laughs> this is too much. <laughs> oh my God. What are you doing? Stop it, man. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good one. And I see you in the next stream. Bye. <laughs> stop, man. Just stop it. Okay. So I'm, I'm out. I'm, I'm going to eat. <laughs> stop it. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys. God damn it. All right. I'm off. See you guys.